and there is potential for power. There is power and there is potential for power. Amen. And today we're talking about the power of potential. And potential is an important word because power is there. Power is there if we want to use it. But our sermon is not titled Activated Power. It's entitled The Power of Potential. What does that mean? It means you can use the power or not. In Matthew 17, Jesus takes his three inner circle disciples his three inner circle disciples. Did you know that Jesus had an inner circle? Did you know that Jesus did play favorites? Oh, he did. Oh, he did. The favorites of Jesus were usually those who were weakest. The favorites of Jesus are, were usually those who struggled the most. The favorites of Jesus were, were those like James who were going to be killed first. The favorites of Jesus were people like Peter, who couldn't help but put his foot in his mouth at all times and all places. The favorites of Jesus were John, the youngest, the most immature, the one that had no idea, bright-eyed, starry-eyed about life. Jesus had favorites. They were his inner circle, and they were the weak ones that he needed to bring in closest to him to protect them, to empower them. He saw the power of potential in his inner circle. And he wanted the power of potential to become activated power. So he took them up on the mount right before his crucifixion. And there, Moses and Elijah appeared. And they saw Jesus in a way that the other disciples would not see Jesus until after the resurrection. They saw Jesus in all of his glory. They saw Jesus in all of his perfection. They saw Jesus as if he was not held back by flesh and blood. And they saw Moses and Elijah on either side of him. And, and, and these favorites of Jesus, these potentials of Jesus, saw power in Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, and they wanted to worship it. And so they were like, Jesus, should we build a tent for each of you, a tabernacle for each of you, that is to say a temple, an altar, and should we worship you? Now, you could say they're one-third, right? <laughs> right? They, they, they should worship Jesus, but not so much Moses and Elijah. You, you, you see why Jesus has favorites? Jesus has favorites because he knows that those who have potential, those who have the potential of power, need to be brought closer to him because they make mistakes like worshiping the wrong God when he is right there in the middle. When it says tens, it means tabernacle. It's the word that is used that Moses carried a tabernacle in the wilderness. May we build you a sanctuary for each of you that we can bow down and worship you. This is my what? Beloved son. Beloved son. With whom I am what? Well pleased. Well pleased. Do what? Listen to him. Listen to him. Now I want you to see the, what the inner circle of Jesus is getting. The inner circle of Jesus is so far from their potential that they mistake Moses and Elijah for someone to worship. And I like that they make a mistake. I'm not crazy that it was blasphemy. But I like that they make a mistake, because I don't know about you, but in my walk towards Jesus, I have made lots of mistakes. 
in, in an odd sort of dysfunctional way, I feel good when I read the Gospels and I see the disciples making mistakes because it makes me realize they're no different than me and I make mistakes and they make mistakes, but Jesus still uses both of us. Now, now their potential for power is so great that, that not only does Jesus put them in the inner circle, let them see the glorified self, but he lets the Father speak directly to them. And the Father says something very important. Behold, this is my son. This is my beloved son. Who is the son? Jesus. Why is he saying that? Because they thought they could worship Moses. They thought they could worship Elijah. No, 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 no. Who do you worship? Jesus. He's the one I'm pleased with. He's the one I want you to Listen to him. He's the one. Listen to what he has to say. Follow what he does. He is your example. Not Moses. Not Elijah. Jesus. Do what? Listen to him. Now, I'd like to tell you a story about how they went down from the mountain and, and because of the potential of power and the power of potential in them that they did amazing things when they went down from the mountain. But that's not true. At some point later in the day, after they come down from a mountain, a crowd sought out Jesus. And in the crowd was a father. And the father came to Jesus, and the father said, have to help my son. My son has a demon. And so Jesus has got his attention and Jesus is listening and Jesus is like listening to everything he's got to say and he says, Lord, have what? Mercy on who? My son. Who did God just call Jesus? His beloved son. And now another father comes and says, have mercy on my son. For he is an epileptic and he suffers what? Terribly. For often he falls into what? Fire, Fire and often what? Into the water. water. And so Jesus is looking at this child, this, this son, and he's wondering, I thought I sent my disciples out to heal everybody in this region. I thought I sent them out with power. But maybe, maybe when I sent them out, I only sent them out with potential. Or maybe I sent them out with power. But they only took potential. So the question I want to ask us is, when we go out, when we left here last week, when we said we're going out and we're going to embrace the resurrected life, when we said we're going to go out and we're going to let Jesus live in us, when Chris saying to us this morning, we know our Redeemer lives, is he living in potential in you or in power in you? Because Jesus is stuck now because he knows he had sent his disciples out in this region. And he sent them out with power. And then this man says, I brought him, my son, to your disciples. And what? They could not heal him. They could not, what? not heal him. They could not heal him. I brought him to your disciples because I believe in their potential. I brought him to your disciples because I believe that people connected with you, Jesus, have power. It's not wrong. It's not improper. It's not mistaken. This father did the right thing. 
His child was inflicted by a curse. His child was inflicted by a disease. His child was inflicted by a denied power. And they did the right thing. They brought him to the community of Jesus. But they didn't find power. Only potential. And the disciples, they... They, they could not heal him. And, and so Jesus answered and he said, Oh, what? Faithful? 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 Nope. Yes. 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 Faithful. Yes. Oh, faithful generation. Yeah. He's talking to his disciples, right? He's got to be talking to the all faithful. Why, when I say faithful, do you say less? That's what the word says. Oh, I see. Oh, faith. Oh, faithless? Powerful generation. Perverse? Twisted? Jesus answered, Oh, faithless and... <clears throat> it's getting about time. <laughs> oh, faithless and twisted generation? Is, is that right? Sadly, it shouldn't be. Oh, faithless and twisted generation. How long? Am I to be with you? Oh, how long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon. And it came out of him. And the boy was what? Healed how? Instantly. You know, the thing that strikes me about this is this doesn't even appear like a very powerful demon. Other demons talk back to Jesus. They did. Other demons even tried to make a deal with Jesus. They did. No, so it's not our time. Come on, Jesus, you know it's not our time. What are you doing here? Remember that? Oh, please, don't, don't cast us out. Let us go into these pigs. Remember that? But this isn't even a powerful demon. This demon doesn't even try. This demon is just like cast out immediately. Just leaves. So what was the problem with the disciples of Jesus? I'll tell you what the problem is. They had potential. They had potential. I don't want on my gravestone, listen to me, I don't want on my gravestone for it to read, here lays Pastor Vinny. He had potential. <laughs> it may sound like a compliment, but not at the end, right? If someone says the little Pastor Vinny, <laughs> here is sweet little Pastor Vinny. Let's rock him in her arms. He has potential. What did I write on my gravestone? Here lies Pastor Vinny. He had, he can even put some modifiers in. Great, strong, exciting, dynamic. Irrefutable, obvious, undeniable, unquestionable potential. Shame on me. 
the power of potential is to rob you of power. The power of potential is to rob you of power. Don't be robbed of power. Don't settle for second place in life. Don't settle for good when great awaits. Don't settle for getting along when you can excel. Don't settle for potential when power is calling you. And it's calling you because you're no different than John. You're no different than Peter. You're no different than James. You're no different than any of the biblical characters that we read who were full of potential. Do you know what happens to disciples who are full of potential? They betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And they end up hanging themselves on a tree. Falling on the ground and their guts spilling out. That's potential. No one here is called to potential. We're called to power. And if you're living a potentially good life, you're not living a powerful life. And power can come at any time, any time that you want it. But don't be like James, because he got power just in time to die. Because he's the first disciple of the twelve to die, after, of course, the one with potential. Don't be like Peter, whose potential caused him to deny Jesus in the courtyard on the night before the crucifixion. Oh, that you would be like the young one, James, or sorry, John, who embraces power and lives to be almost 100 years old. <laughs> and history tells us that History tells us that in Ephesus, they, they, they would bring him in, according to church fathers, church tradition, they would carry him in on a board on Sabbath mornings because he was crippled of old age. And, and they would prop the board at the, the front of the congregation and he would say, my little children, love one another. Because he lived long with power. So the disciples, they go to Jesus. They're like, why are we only living up to potential? Why don't we have power? Listen to what Jesus says. Jesus said, because of what? Because of what? Because of what? Is, is my screen wrong? Am I getting it wrong? <laughs> because of what? What kind of faith? I can't hear. I don't think they hear you on the stream. What kind of faith? Little? Little faith. Hold on to that word, little. What kind of faith? Little. You can do a lot with little. Because of your what? Little faith. Little faith, truly. The, the word in Greek is amen, because that's what the word amen means. Truly, absolutely, verity. It's you. If you have what? Faith, faith like what? A grain of what? Mustard seed. Mustard seed. You may say to what? To the mountain. This mountain. Here. What? Move from here to there. Move. From where? Here to, the here to where? There. There. And it will look at you like you're crazy. It will move. It will move. And what? Come on, it's on the screen. And what? Your boss? Your work schedule? 
Your inability to make it on time to church? You're absent on Wednesday night prayer meeting? Or refresh? The problems that crop up in your life every day? What's it say? Nothing will be impossible for you. How much? Nothing. Nothing can stand in your way except for potential. You have the potential to live a faithful life this week. Or you have the power that nothing will be impossible for you this week. Do you believe nothing? Do you believe that Jesus can give you power that makes nothing impossible? Because it only takes a little. Just a little grain of a mustard seed. Here's the thing about this story. There's no reason. It wasn't a tough demon. It wasn't a tough situation. It was, it was just what it was. And you know what? The, the demons that are going to face you this week, they're going to tell you they're tough. They might even talk back to you. But even the tough one's not impossible for him, right? You know, we, 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 we can't come back to this and say, well, I would have been faithful except nothing. It only takes a little. The grain of a mustard seed. See, see, I think what happened, this is what I think happened. I think they didn't listen. Because James... Peter and John just heard the voice of God speak into their heart and say, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Don't worry about epilepsy. Don't worry about demons. Don't worry about sickness. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Are you listening to him this week? Because this week he says, you don't have potential. You have the kind of power that nothing gets in the way of. It reminds me of the story of a young person with an old name. You ever meet people and their name just doesn't seem to fit them? This is a young girl. <laughs> she, was, she was in her last year of high school, and her name was Belinda. And people used to tease her, like, are you an old lady in a little girl's body? Belinda. But Belinda had been her grandmother's name. And she'd been named after her grandmother, and she'd been raised by a single mom. And, and she was not going to be able to go to college. But she didn't want to go to college. She just wanted to go to trade school. She wanted to go to a particular kind of trade school. She wanted to go to chef school. And there was a chef school in her community. She lived in a small community. And she was small town poor. I grew up small town poor. It's different than urban poor. In urban poor, there's usually opportunities, but no one lets you in on them. In small town poor, there aren't opportunities <laughs> to be let in on. Except for Belinda, there was one. One of the local chefs from town over had agreed to set up a scholarship for only one student. He invited them over to his restaurant in the next town. And, and in the school, guidance counselor, I don't know the process, they set up, they picked out the students. And they were going to just go into his kitchen, and they were going to cook for him. And 
he would find the one with potential. You know the problem with potential, right? Potential is not power. And so Belinda goes into this kitchen and she has to prepare fresh trout. Belinda is lucky that Belinda is lucky when she doesn't have to cook fish sticks. Belinda's lucky when her mom can afford frozen fr fish from Walmart. But Belinda, she watches all the cooking school, school shows. She watches all the, the Bravo Learning Channel food shows. She, she reads all the cookbooks. And, and she cooks. She does amazing things with macaroni and cheese. She does amazing things with hamburger helper. God bless you for not knowing what that is. She does amazing things with a can of mushroom soup. But now she's in this restaurant and she has this fish and she doesn't even know how to cut the head off of it. Or take the guts out. Every fish she's ever seen came in a box. <laughs> and she's looking over at the other students, and she's watching how they cut down the middle of the fish, up to the gills, pull things out, and then cut across to take the head off. And so she's just like going with the flow, because you know what Belinda believes about herself? She believes she has potential. And she's stirring up the stir fry, fresh vegetables. She's never seen anything like this at Walmart. She's, she's, she's sorry, Walmart. Uh, she's 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 flipping them in the in in in, in her her frying pan, and she's putting the fish in, and, and she goes to taste the fish, and it tastes terrible. Now, I don't know if you're fish eaters or or or, or you've eaten fresh fish, but but the problem with fresh fish, particularly trout, which is a river fish, is it has this sort of gamey, this sort of wild taste to it. It's gamey. It's, it's not like processed fish. It's gamey. And she tastes it and it tastes gamey. It tastes ooey. And she doesn't know what to do. And she's thinking, what would Grandma Belinda do? And when she's thinking about what Grandma Belinda would do, she trips, hits the spice rack. Everything comes breaking down, smashing across the counter, and spilling out of this bottle is mustard powder. And she remembers one thing her grandmother told her. If you have faith of the mustard seed, if you're not a fish eater, I'm not either. Only thing that really makes it bearable is a little bit of mustard. She sprinkles the mustard on that trout. You see, the disciples, they failed because they didn't have power. They had potential. And Jesus was calling them the power Jesus was calling them to be the example to that father. The witness would have been much greater had the followers of Jesus been able to heal the boy than for the father to have to bring the boy to Jesus. You see, we're at a deficit this week as we go out. We're at a deficit this week because if we cook with only potential, Jesus is not present on the earth. We can't cook with potential this week. We've got to cook with power. And here's the good news. It only takes the faith of a little spilled mustard. 
You have to have faith. You have to tell people like Belinda about your faith. Because you won't know when they need it. You may not be in their kitchen when things get fishy. Marvin Lewis. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages, let His praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing. Standing on the promises of Christ, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the holy storms of doubt and fear assail. By the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of Christ my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on this week I don't want you to live with potential this week I don't want you to live with possibility this week I don't want you to be good this week I'm not interested in mediocre this week I'm not interested in surviving this week I'm not interested in getting by this week, I'm not interested in okay. This week, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I'm not interested in the games of demons. This week, I'm interested in the power of promises. And I'm interested in standing on the promise of Jesus. His promise this week is power over potential. His promise this week is nothing. What? You have potential. Let's see if you have power. His promise is power over everything. Nothing shall overcome you. Would you put your prayer request on our card? Would you fill out your data on your card so I can get a hold of you? Would, would, would you commit if you've not been baptized? Would you commit preparing for baptism? There are people here who need baptism. There are people here who live every week in potential. But Jesus is calling them to power. Is it you? Is it you? Stand on the promises. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword. Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of Christ my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Standing, standing
Dear Heavenly Father, this week I pray. Dear Heavenly Father, this week I pray. Father, this week I pray that nobody simply get by. That nobody simply squeak through. That nobody struggle to the finish line. This week, Father, I pray, I pray, I pray just for a little mustard. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.